Well, you can do this one if you want. <laughs> Get in that home blad position. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, you can try to do doing this one too, but this is just this. Remember, practical. This is impractical. Is it done? It's still done. So it's the preference of the facility and how they want it done. But most places do it this way: the camp commentary method. Okay. So this is probably the ones that I want you guys to practice on. Oh, you can do that, or that. All right, patella. It says PA patella. Why can't we do AP? No ID. No ID. Practicality, <coughs> what are we going to do? AP. AP. If you have patellar injury, are you going to do this? Probably not, because it's going to hurt. No? OK. So um, face down, OK, face down, prone. Um, I added this on here because I don't think it was on your slide. Five degree internal rotation. So you're going to rotate the leg medially or internally about five degrees because we're trying to place the patella with no rotation in the middle of the field. So it's going to require a five degree internal rotation of the leg. Central ray is going to be directed mid patella area or the top to teal crease. If it was done AP, you could center right at the patella. Face down, right at the crease. Face up, right at the patella. Okay. Do we need Do we need to have a large open field? No. We're just looking at the patella, so a small field. Okay. The smaller the field, too, the better the contrast. Now, these are not good views in evaluating the patella because you have superposition over the, the femur. All right. So the patella should be centered right in the, on the field with no rotation and optimal exposure factors. Okay. This is the one that came with the slide. I think this is a better view. You guys see anything going on here? Yes, yes. Okay, you can see a fracture. This is called a stellar fracture or a star, it's called a star-shaped fracture because you have a center point of impact and it spreads in all different directions like a starburst. Okay, that's a starburst fracture or a stellar fracture. Okay. Lateral patella. Very similar to that of the knee. Okay, you just put them on their side, feeling for the epicondyle so that it's perpendicular with the image receptor. Now, I'm not going to open up my field as big as the knee because I'm just focusing on the patella. Okay, the central ray is going to be directed at the patellofemoral joint. So, right behind the kneecap or right behind the patella. Okay, this is important. You're only going to bend your knee approximately 5 to 10 degrees because if there is patellar injury, you don't want to bend it more than that, okay? Because now you're going to cause separation of the fragments, okay? Yeah. How do they come in like that? Holy cow. I mean, I take it that they can't sit in a wheelchair? Probably not. Or they probably will, not knowing the extent of their, their injury. So, but look how swollen that is. Can you see the soft tissue swelling? Okay, so the patella and knee joint in the center of the collimation. I'm glad mine didn't separate. Mine just got dislocated. Uh, patella is in the true lateral with optimal exposure factor. So again, no more than five to, five to 10 degree of flexion of the knee. Otherwise, anything more than that can cause additional injury. Okay? Over or under rotated? Under. Is it under rotated? It like it's too much, too much imposition. Yeah, yeah so slightly super, I mean there's a little bit more superposition <coughs> than you want, so that's under rotated. Pardon me? You wouldn't like with that specific one, you wouldn't be like, oh, rotate it more when it's all swollen and stuff. Well, I mean, yeah, again, we this is the best that you can do. You gotta take into consideration your, your patient's uh, condition. Right. No, so I, I mean like, yeah, so I mean I would just turn that you can already see what you need to see. Other over or under rotated, so what? Okay. Right. Yeah, but I mean you're absolutely correct. I mean I wouldn't go back and repeat it just because they're slightly off. I see what I need to see, and I'm not going to put my patient into more 
you know, uh, <coughs> traumatic movement more than I have to. Okay. <laughs> Don't laugh. This is real. We actually have a merchant's board in our closet. <laughs> yeah, it's called a merchant's board. Okay. This is done. Is that one on the comp? Huh? Is that on the comp or no? Is it on the comp? No. Okay. <laughs> no, you're not going to use the merchant for it. Okay. okay. But this, yeah, it's a yeah, you're going to do the opposite of the sunrise. <coughs> they have these in a lot of the facilities. So they use the merchant board to do this instead of the sunrise. I'm just showing you this now so you're not going to be all like freaking out when you see this at your <laughs> hospital. Okay. But they do exist. All right. So the patient is going to be placed on the edge of the table here to allow for the, the merchant board to be applied. Um, the knee is going to be flexed approximately 40 degrees with an angulation of 30 degrees from the horizontal. So going from the horizontal, you're gonna angle about 30 degrees. It's tangential, so you're skimming. Where are we skimming? Where's the center ray directed? The patella. At the patellofemoral joint, okay? And it's done bilaterally, okay? So we're looking at both both uh, joint spaces, okay? Looks something like that. Again, we, we have that in our, in our room, the closet, okay? So the tangential projection of the patella, this is the merchant's method. The intercondylar sulcus, this is the sulcus. So there, must, there might be something going on over here. I'm gonna say there is, okay? So the sulcus and the patella are well visualized and this joint space should be open with optimal exposure factors. Okay, this is the merchant's method. There's another one with the uh, merchants that I downloaded. This is also merchants. And you can see that the patella is not over the sulcus. This individual has a patellofemoral syndrome with patellar tilting, which is a condition that, this condition that happens when you, you don't walk normally, okay? Um, the gait can change the position of your patella. Okay, it can be due to different types of conditions, what causes that tilt. Okay, but that's patellar mm -hmm. tilt. My knees are all jacked. Is it tilting or tiddling? That's the medical term for tilting. <laughs> I hate autocorrect. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. I like I like tiddling. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's our new name for that. Yeah. Can we put that on the exam? <laughs> <laughs> Tiddle. 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 Tiddling. Like I'm sorry, I'm, sir. I'm you got fatal tiddling. Glad you guys are here to keep me in shape. Somebody's got to do it. I love it. I love it. Okay. All right. Here's the infrahouse superior projection. Um, this is also known as a sunrise view. It takes a little bit more work, but this again is common in, in radiology. So patient is supplying. Make sure they're shielded, okay, because the x-ray is going to be going this way. You want to make sure that they're, sh they're shielded. Cassette is going to sit 90 degrees, okay. It's going to be 90 degrees with their, with their, uh, with their femur, okay. 40, 40 to 45 degree flexion of the knee, you're gonna to have to bolster it up with a 10 degree, 10 to 15 degree angulation from the lower leg. So you're gonna match the, you're gonna go horizontal, or perpendicular, I'm sorry, parallel with the lower leg, okay? And then you're gonna go about 10 to 15 degrees downward. Okay, in between, in between the two <coughs> knees at the level of the patellofemoral joint, now, what you will see out in the field, okay, here you have the patient laying down and they're holding the cassette. What you will see are technologists having the patient sit up and hold it. What's the problem with that? They're getting blasted in the face. So you want to avoid doing that. If you see them doing that, are you going to tell them what they're doing is wrong? No. Okay, because don't say Dr. F, say Ms. Smith said. <laughs> shouldn't do He's that. wrong. Yeah. All right, so open up the field enough just to include both joints. Okay, marker, you gotta use your marker so we know which is the left and the right. Just like in these previous images, we need to know which is right and left. Okay, so correct marker placement. You don't have to use both as long as we know which one is which. Oh, also, 
When positioning for the sunrise view, get the patient as close to the edge of the table as possible because we need to accommodate for um, that extra tube dropping below the, the level of the table. If they're too far in, in, in the other end, we're not gonna be able to bring our x-ray tube down. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Here is the Houston method. They're on their belly. Knee flex is probably 40 degrees. Okay, again, this is gonna take some ingenuity. I, I, I don't know who's holding the strap, to be honest, or how they're holding it. Or is it taped at the end of the it's table? It's to their wrist. Okay. It's to be something, right? Oh, okay. Hogtied. <laughs> but this is. <laughs> but you can also do this by um, by putting different props on there. But now you can't see where your central ray is going. So the knee is flexed approximately 40 degrees, and then angled 15 to 20 degrees from the lower leg. So again, here is your leg, and you're gonna angle it about 15 to 20 degrees to skim the uh, patella at the patellofemoral joint. Okay, which one do you guys like so far? I'm sorry. The four. Okay, the, this isn't looking so bad now, right? Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's not as much um, it's, I think it's Yeah, I think it's less effort when you have the merchant's board. That's why they use it. This, you can have some errors. This, you can have some errors. Okay, here's the set of gas method. Knee flex is the same thing, patient is face down um, with the knee flexion of approximately 90 degrees and again 15 to <coughs> 20 degrees from the lower leg. 15 to 20 degrees from the lower leg, triangulation. Okay? That's a set of gast. That's a set of gast. That's a set of gast. So it's, just, it's a 90 degree band, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's no modesty right there. <laughs> no patient no modesty. modesty. So yeah, so when you have them bending their legs like that, please make sure they're um, they're covered up. Okay, make sure they're covered make sure they have up. clothes on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. So here I have some more patellar X-rays. Okay, that's normal, right? Do we agree that's normal? Mm -hmm. How about this one? That's a bad fracture. It's not normal. Okay. So it's interesting when you see a patellar uh, surgery because they they actually put the patella in like a uh, like a, a bird's nest basket, a wiring to hold everything in place, and that's what it looks like in surgery. Okay. <coughs> Are we done? Okay. Uh, which radiograph A or B demonstrates a repeatable error? A. A or B. <clears throat> a. Why? It's low contrast. Gray. Low contrast is too gray, right? So we're dealing with bone. We want more black, more and, black white. and white. And it's so gray, I can't even see the patella. It's kind of washed out. And you, <laughs> you're not really seeing any type of bone, mark, bone markings either. Okay, which radiograph A or B is a higher quality? So which is better? It says which is better? A or B? A is better. Okay. What factors lead to the substandard radiograph? What's going on with that one? Is it motion? Okay. Are we seeing are we seeing the patellofemoral joint? No. We're not. Are we seeing the knee joint? No. We are not. Is there a superimposition of the condyles? There is not. You also have the the uh, fibula superimposed by the tibia. That's not good either, right? Because it only should be the the apex and the head that should be superimposed. Here you have the entire fibula superimposed. Over rotated or under rotated? Under. Under rotated. All right. Did they use an angulation of the X-ray tube? No. No, right? Because they sh there should be superimposition. So how are we going to get that up there? Fifteen degrees. Which way? Down. Okay. If it's medial lateral. Cephalic. Okay. If it's lateral medial. Caudal. Okay. You guys remember that? Okay, which radiograph A or B, which is better, A or B? Well, it's the same image as before, right? So we put A is better. What's wrong with B? Again, same thing. You can't, you can't see this. You can't see this. But at least it rotated more because the fibula. Yeah, so now it's what? Now it's two. Over rotated. Now it's over rotated, right? 
Okay? And they, I think they did use a tube angulation because they're somewhat superimposed. The epicondyles are somewhat superimposed, right? Okay. So you guys got it. Which is better? A. 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 Okay. You should see the patellofemoral joint clearly, and this is not. Um, there might be overflexion of the leg causing, remember when you flex your leg too much, it's going to draw the patella close to the sulcus. We're done. Yay. All right. Um, before you leave, 